When you're cold or need something to do Cast on a project or see an old one through Grab a beer, take a seat, frog with a friend or two Fuck this knit Fuck this knit Fuck it So welcome to Fuck This Knit We are your bitches for the evening I am Amber I'm Erin I'm Emily I guess let's start off with talking about what we are drinking tonight. Yep. So I am enjoying a lovely Ryan Geist dad. It is their hoppy holiday ale. I enjoy the festive plaid on the can. Yes, yes. I, I love their, their, nice their colors. Mm-hmm. Um, I normally hate plaid, but I love this can. Mm-hmm. Well, it's a very dad can. It yeah, is. yeah. And, and fun fact, Alex actually bought a six pack of this the day after Grace was born. Oh. Yeah, it's festive. It was it was festive, and he it said dad, so he he kind of had to get it. Mm-hmm. So he had a moment. He 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 had his dad moment. Adorbs. Yeah, and so now I'm just drinking it because it's delicious. All right. Well, um, I've mostly sworn off booze for a few days since my New Year's Eve debacle, but I am sipping on some uh, delicious apple pie moonshine. Uh, as to not be non-alcoholic for this lovely podcast. It's also uh, like uh, lovely watered down. Yeah, it's got like four ice cubes in it, but it's just one shot. So. Well, yeah, because, I mean, my, my poor liver, man. <laughs> I have some sort of a Trader Joe's red wine. It's a Grafone from someplace. Grafone? Yeah. What, what the hell is that? I don't know. It's red. It's red. Does, it's a wine. Does it's it smell wine. bad? It smells like wine. Yeah, it smells pretty bad. No, it doesn't. It smells like a red wine. It's good. This smells like alcohol. <laughs> that smells like rubbing alcohol. <laughs> and apples. <laughs> Apple scented rubbing alcohol. It's actually not bad. We bought that for Dragon Con. That's why we have that. Um, oh, it's still around? Mm-hmm. Holy moly. It's Amateurs. fine. <laughs> Says the woman who drinks a fifth. I drank two fifths at Dragon It was Con. like, so there was an apple pie, um, quote unquote, baking contest at Dragon Con on our floor where people like mixed oh. apple pie shots and you know, there was like a taste test. So we didn't want to drink that after that because of gotcha. all of the apple pie. Yeah. There's a lot of apple I'm, pie I'm shots. And there's so much sugar in that biz. It's a lot of and sugar. And there was a lot of sugar in that fifth of St. Germain mm-hmm. and that fifth of Captain Morgan. I just had vodka. Oh, I need to show you. My sister bought me this rainbow flask for Dragon Con this year. It's like treated metal to look like rainbow i'm gonna be very fancy i should buy a flask for dragon con this year <laughs> alex got me a flask for christmas what does your flask look like is it rainbow it's just silver it it, it seriously it looked flask. it seriously it's looked like he got it from walgreens like but it's a flask so so uh you need to get your flask but before uh may so when we go to the kentucky sheep and wool oh yeah <laughs> we can all oh have our, yeah bitches. we can all have our flasks classy okay be a classy bitches okay so hashtag on to- classy bitches <laughs> on- <laughs> hashtag classy bitches and what what is the next uh subject uh next subject is our finished objects if we have finished any since our last podcast but guess what we haven't had a previous podcast so yeah yeah i, I finished something finished yesterday so yeah we'll let that count it's mitts they're like uh, convertible mitts with the flip, flap, floop thing. Flip, flap, floop. It's the Juris Mitts pattern by Alexa Winslow, and it was in Interweave magazine, which is dumb because then the pattern can't be in my Ravelry library. I have to go separately and like have the download on my computer. It doesn't magic link where you can open it in the Ravelry library. Uh, weird. <laughs> which I hate. Yeah. But... It was the best looking convertible mitt pattern for giant man hands that I could find, so it was worth it. So they're not for you? No, they're giants. They're huge. They're right here. Um, so you, the first thing that you finished, January, was not for you. But they are a leftover Christmas present. Oh. They are the final gift mess project. By the way, I knit like 27 things for gift mess this Blech. year. Yeah, I saw um, that, and way to make the rest of us look bad. Yeah. No. I don't think it's happening. That's next why year. I'm starting a lot. now. That's why I'm not doing it. Yeah. I started in March last year. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. Show up. Show, show but yeah, us. I have these things. Um, they even have a button. I do. The button is, um, I got in my, I got that Jimmy Beans wool um, beanie bags um, subscription last year, and they came in that. So that was useful. Mm. And the I, yarn is Mad Tosh uh, Vintage. 
I really want to get the Jimmy Beans advent calendar next year. I know. That thing looked awesome. Yeah, I was seeing some of the stuff in it mm-hmm. this year in the monthly thread on LSG. I liked the shawl that it made, too. Holy shit. So I um, might have subscribed for a Jimmy Beans subscription-based thing what? for this year. Have you seen it yet? No. no. It's really cool. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, it's the... So this year, did you see that they did that Tosh astrology thing where every month um, Madeline Tosh did a zodiac sign based colorway? No, that came out. Oh my god, it's <gasps> fucking awesome! No. You need to go look it I up right now. I need it. I need and it's in every base, yeah. and you, yeah, they're all really beautiful because you're gonna I mean, you're gonna have to send sets. me the link because yes, 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 and well, we can put that in our show notes links. So yes, because we're fancy podcast people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but anyway, so that that was like super popular and crazy. I don't know if I don't know if they still have all the colors. I think they do. Maybe. but there yeah there was like a blanket project that people did that people did like a one stripe with each of the colors but this year they're doing um semi-precious tosh oh, and it's nice. all the birthstones yeah. for the months um each colorway and they're doing there's two different subscriptions there's one that's a blanket where you get a whole skein and you do a blanket with it and that's 22 dollars a month so that's actually not that that's bad. not that bad but it's a little pricey for my situation but they're doing a shawl based one where you get 70 yards of tosh merino light every month and that's only 6.95 including shipping each month so i signed up for that biz oh my goodness yeah 6.95 plus shipping not even plus shipping it includes oh, shipping plus oh. shipping Included. Wow. Mm-hmm. i think you have to buy the pattern separately on ravelry but that's like three dollars yes. right at that point it just- You've yeah, ended so, up with a lot of mad it, for not a lot of money. It said that the first colorway for January should be coming out by like January 19th. So if you buy it by then, you can start when it starts. But yeah, I'm really excited about that. And the picture, I'll actually try and pull it up on my phone right now. Because the picture for the, like what the first few colors, I don't know if they're the first few colors or if they're just like the base colors, but they look awesome. Like at the top there is like a purple. Okay, so that's, that's like really a, pretty. Because well, yeah. I know that... Um, I don't know. Yeah, all I know is that September is sapphire because that's... Well, and March is aquamarine, so mm-hmm. that could be at the bottom there, March. Yeah, but there's like... And I know amethyst really and then like... Uh, I'm guessing that cream is like maybe the opal or pearl or something. Yeah. But yeah, yeah so that, pearl too. that biz that? looks awesome and I, I am so. super stoked for it. Maybe. Mm. The other nice thing is that they're charging you monthly when they yeah, bill out. No, you don't have to pay nice. up front like a club. They just bill you um, when well, they no, send it I to can, you. I can swing six right it's easier month. to swing 695 than yeah 695 times 12 right now right yeah absolutely yeah so that's a thing okay. that is a thing so our first tangent <laughs> <laughs> that was a good tangent that was a great that was tangent. topical okay <laughs> um so that was the only finished object of the group yay okay um so next is our works in progress i see aaron is knitting on something right at this very moment it matches her hair it does match my hair um it's lovely which fuchsia. is gonna be fantastic it is the pussy hat by cat coil and i'm trying to get it done before inauguration day and i'm knitting it in mad color fiber arts rapture in oh no not again <laughs> and it is a lovely <laughs> blend of pinks and purples it's which very bright in fact, does match my hair right mm-hmm. now. It yes. does. Great. Yes, it does. It's like a perfect match. In fact, when I was casting this on at, at, over Christmas break at my mom's, she said, what thing are you making to match your head? <laughs> like, mm, something to put on my head. Thanks. A hat. Yep. A hat. A hat like a cat. See, I don't, I don't, I don't have any of the pink yarn, so I, I don't, I don't know if I can make one. I don't, yeah, I don't have, um, well, I guess I have leftovers from that blanket I made that are worsted and I could make a stray pat out of. Well, this is actually not even worsted. It's, it's fingering, fingering, but I'm Oh, you're doubling it. it yeah, I'm holding it double because it's just too perfect because it, I mean, it, it's no, that's gorgeous. A color. I don't have, I don't generally buy things that are hot pink. So. I got this in the uh, Mad Color Fiber Arts. That was Hitchhiker's. The Hitchhiker's Club. Yeah. She mm-hmm. did. Because uh, the name, Oh No, Not Again. Right from the the potted plant that's my favorite part of that book and actually we'll be bringing up that very uh fiber club or yarn club and this this time i got the the yarn sometimes i get the fiber but we bring that up again when we talk about worms (laughs) worms anyways so and that's the pussy hat project hat. this is the pussy Mm -hmm. hat project hat yes except i have modified it to knit in the round 
because of it's race. not in the round no oh, the, ori- not the original <laughs> the original is not in the round it seemed um but from what i understand you can knit it in the round and as long as you do the three needle bind off on the inside at the end that will form the ears i have a different cat hat pattern that is free in There's my favorite so many it's like the kit cat the cat hat yeah if I make one, I'm probably going to use that one. Well, there's so many of them out right now. I'm just, like I said, trying to get this done so I can wear it. Legit. I'm going to the march, so I should probably make a yeah, thing. I'm not going to be able to, so I'll be wearing my hat with spirit. Okay. Who so, else is working on stuff? Because, I mean, I have more stuff that technically I'm working on, but. I, th- I think we should trade. Yeah. Trade around. Okay. Go ahead, Emily. Um, so I am working on my first sweater, which I am picking up again after it took a nap because I knit 27 Christmas presents this year. (laughs) Um, and it's the Snowbird pattern by Heidi Kermeyer. And I'm knitting it out of Knit Picks Wool of the Andes because I got the dollar balls back last big sale last year. Balls. Balls, balls, (laughs) balls, balls, balls. balls. And uh, it's the bittersweet Heather colorway, so it's like a really dark Mm. chocolatey brown, um, which is pretty. And it's hopefully going to be a sweater. Right now it's kind of like pieces of a sweater with lots of strings coming off of it and someday will evolve into a full sweater. Um, But I'm almost done with the second sleeve. I only have like four more rows and then I'm done with the second Uh, sleeve. I know you hate me. Sleeves are terrible. Amber, what are you working on? So, um, the 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 most exciting one that I'm working on right now is a sweater. Mm-hmm. It's Row by Michelle Wang, and oh my goodness, it is a cabled beauty. I just put all the pieces together, and I entered what's now known as the black hole of knitting. Um, basically, the way that this sweater is constructed is you knit all the pieces flat, seam them up together, and then you knit. The neckband. It's from the bottom front, around the neck, down the other front. Uh, 400 something stitches, I decided not to count. And uh, it's two by two ribbing for eight inches. It's like knitting one really skinny, really long two by two rib scarf. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so far I have a half an inch, and I've been working on it for three days now. So yeah, this is gonna be great. And speaking of black hole of knitting and sweaters, I too have a sweater on the needles, and we're not going to talk about how long this thing has been on those needles, but it is the Braid Hills pattern by Kate Davies. I love it. I'm making it in Stonehenge Fiber Mill Shepherd's Wool DK in the Lakeshore colorway. It's this really pretty, like, tweedy, pale, like, teal color. And I was almost done with one of those sleeves when I realized that decreases are a thing, a thing I did not do. So I ripped out the entire sleeve and... I was there. It was very sad. It was... I just drank a bunch and then did it. Like you do. Fortified and moved on. And so now I'm continuing to knit on that sleeve. And all I have left on this stupid sweater is two sleeves and a neckband. And then I'm done. And I'll have this gorgeous cabled cardigan. It's luck. I mean, I cannot wait to wear it. But sleeves are so boring. I once I get to it, once I get down past the elbow, the c- cables come back into it, and I'll be excited to work on it again. But so, so technically, stuck and net sleeves are boring. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If they were more than just you know knitting and knitting and knitting and knitting, <laughs> that's what my whole sweater is. But it's because it's my first sweater, so it was like I should only do something. So yeah, I only have so one, many balls in the air. This one is my th- <laughs> balls. Third hashtag balls hashtag balls. Uh, <laughs> this one is my third sweater. My first cardigan, though, and I'm really liking it. I really like the pattern. It was very well written, although she's apparently updated it to make it even easier since I had started it. So that's pretty exciting. I just really think it's gorgeous, and I can't wait to wear it. I just sleeves. I'm also working on a large um, shawl wrap thingy. Uh, it's the Mukari pattern by Amba O'Brien, which BT dubs. I love everything that she makes. I love all of her shawl patterns. She's a boss. But it is uh, three colors of Malabrigo sock in the uh, colorways mm. April Indicieta and Eggplant. Um, so it's kind of the um, Abril is like a really rich purple and uh, Indicieta, the one I have, because they're they all look different. Uh, is kind of like light greens, light yellows, light purpleys. So those are striping 
in the sections and then the eggplant is really more of like a charcoal gray than the one I have. It is really? not in I don't know if the skein I got is mislabeled, but it is not purple mm. in any way, shape, or form. I bought it in the store so I knew what color it was. I wasn't like misled online or anything, but it is not purple. And that is uh lace sections, so it alternates the like two row garter stitch striping and lace pattern. Nice. Okay, my other project that I'm working on right now is the Hanami Stole by uh, Melanie Gibbons. And let me tell you, I'm, I'm like, quite literally right before this, I was binding it off, like, the one edge. I still have a whole nother half to go. But, yeah, that bind off is a bitch. What is that? <laughs> so, basically, you you knit the... So, I, I started in the middle because I'm doing the the... the the, the cherry blossoms on both sides. I'm not worrying about the basket weave. Um, so I started provision, provisional cast on in the middle, knit it on down. And then at the very end, you make a ruffle. Oh, no. So you double the amount of stitches that you had. No, no, no. And I had already increased the number of stitches that I had because it wasn't going to be wide enough. And I wanted it to be nice and wide. But I but positive note is I am using the Miss Babs yet. Mm. And I love this yarn. Mm. It is so squishy and yummy, and I don't even care that it's pink. <laughs> <laughs> it is just so wonderful to work with, and and so yeah, I'm really excited that I'm gonna finish that up this week. Well, that half this week, and I have a whole other half to do. Um, but yeah, so that's that's coming along. I need to need to ask the Zenak if if. Uh, she wants so I'm I'm making this project for a will work for a yarn. Mm-hmm. So Zenak sent me her yarn. I'm knitting her the stole and she sends me yarn as payment. And I need to ask her because she sent me four skeins of the Miss Babs for this stole and I've only used like one in a little bit for yeah. almost half. So I'm gonna ask her if she wants some added in the middle since I did a provisional cast on. Oh yeah, yeah, good idea. Yeah, totes. So I need to I need to message her later on tonight. I'm working on Magrathea, uh, my second Ooh. one by Martina Bem because I love her and everything that she has created. She's also wearing one right now too. I am in fact wearing my other Magrathea. Um, the new one I am knitting in Volmiza, mm-hmm. in um, what is now called Pure. It was the 100% merino mm. and the bluebell. It was part of her sock club a million years ago that I was lucky enough to actually be in somehow. And the angels opened up the skies and said, you can have Volmiza. And there was much rejoicing. So, yeah, no, it's gorgeous. And I love it. And it's working up so go- Oh, God. I need to make one of them. It's, I mean, of all of the hitchhiker pattern or hitchhiker related patterns that I've made so far, the Mar- Magrathia is my favorite. My face is the hitchhiker so far. I mean, I just finished. I mean, that. I like my trillion. I wear it all the time, but I like the pattern. I mean, of I the just hitchhiker. finished that hitchhiker right mm-hmm. before Christmas and then immediately wanted to cast on a second hitchhiker. So I'm pretty sure as soon as this Magrathea is done, I'm going to be making another hitchhiker because Martina Ben is amazing. Yep. Yeah. Totes. Um, my other thing is a pair of socks that are for me and not oh, for a giant footed husband or father in law. Hooray! Or just father. So many giant man socks in my recent uh, past. But, and uh, recent future, apparently. Yeah, that too. I gotta make Chad another pair of socks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my husband has size 14 feet, so. Yeah, that's how you know it's real love. It is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we measured uh, one of the size 14 socks I made. I was out with Amber, and we discovered that it is a sleeve yeah, yep. no, of I, the I sweater. Yeah, I also tried it on, and it is definitely a, a sleeve for me, and I have very long arms. Mm-hmm. See, th- this is why I taught my husband how to knit. <sighs> yeah, I should try that again, perhaps. This didn't go well the first time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, I'm making the Blueberry Tarn socks by Louise Tilbrook. Um, and I'm making them with the Little Mount Yarn Co. Essential Sock in the Party Like It's 1999 colorway, oh, yeah. no, which like uh, we found at the Kentucky Wool Fest um, that we went to in October. Some yes. random adventure day. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, it was in October because, yeah, that was the same day I went to the art show at the Haunted House. Yes. So, yes, yes October. Um, 
Yes, and I was only supposed to buy fiber there because I had just gotten my wheel, but this skein of yarn spoke to me, and I'm glad I got it because it's making some rad socks. Um, but yeah, it's like it's a pretty vanilla sock, but it has one like ribbed cable going down the whole leg and foot, so it is sweet. It's also like it's a really bright yarn, which is really nice for when we're in this, you know, wonderfully cold and dreary it is. winter it's time. Really festive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's why it's I'm excited like about neons. this, you know, hot pink and purple hat that mm-hmm. I'm getting on. Oh, yeah, I suppose I should have described the colors. It's like <laughs> a white base with like neon pink and green and purple. It's it's like a speckled colorway. So it's kind of like neon yeah, confetti. Yeah, but it's working up really nice. It is. Yes, it's not too busy for the cabled sock. Okay, so now that we're done with our works in progress, we can move on to, Erin, you want to start with? Sure. So Um, how did you learn how to knit? Well, actually, my grandmother got me into it when I was very little. Whenever you went to my grandparents' house, which I did as often as I could, you did not watch TV. You did something. So she taught me how to knit, so granddad set me up on the porch with some Bob Ross and an easel, And so I knit quite a bit when I was little and then just grew out of it. But when I got older, I discovered that there are actually knitting patterns out there that have of things I would actually wear because most of the patterns that my grandmother had in her collection were from the seventies. And, um, there's a lot of ponchos, (laughs) a lot of ponchos. So I never, the knitting never really stuck with me. I continued to do like the embroidery and the cross stitch stuff all those years. But when I started seeing more modern patterns, you know, skulls and crossbones and weird shit on it, I was like, oh, fuck, I need to learn how to do this again. So I picked up a copy of Stitch and Bitch. And between that and frantic phone calls to my grandmother, picked it up again and just kind of went crazy. Mm -hmm. Nice. And so what eventually was... bought a wheel and you know, learned how to do all that, too. So what was your first project? Oh, fuck, if I remember. <laughs> well, it's been years ago at this point. Okay, we won't talk about how many years it's been. We'll just move straight on to Emily. <laughs> Emily, how you doing? Hey. Um, I learned to knit when I was, like, 12 or 13 from a book. Um, it was one of those Klutz craft books, like Klutz with a K and a Z. Um, and I, I don't know where I got the book or anything. I just, um, grabbed that book and it came with like yarn and needles in it, um, and taught myself from that. And it had a couple beginner projects and like the last project was a scarf. So I made a really terrible scarf for my 13 year old boyfriend at the time. So that's gross. Uh, (laughs) Um, Yes, barfing ensues. <laughs> um, so I did that, and then I pretty much could only make scarves for several years because scarves are a rectangle. And so I did that, and I knitted on scarves while I was in class in high school and stuff because math is boring. Um, so I was. I like math. That's cool. Math is cool. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, art major with two science majors here <laughs> well, and to be fair i only like certain types of math i'm not a fan of algebra but it turns out i like calculus mm. so i'm weird see i fair liked enough. algebra i hated geometry yeah i also to be fair i also knit in classes that i liked um but <laughs> um so i was that weird knitting person in class in high school and then uh i started to do more in-depth stuff when i went to college and in the past year i've learned how to make socks and i feel like that has been like oh i can make anything because i have made a sock i really wish i was knitting when i was in high school because that would have been something else to add to i was just that weird person in Mm -hmm. high school not that weird knitting person in high school i also had tamagotchis on my desk all the time i mean mean, yeah yeah, who Mm -hmm. didn't Mm -hmm. you're you're still the weird person i have no idea what you're talking about pink and purple hair is completely normal they're colors found in nature true my Typically purple. on flowers, but you know, they're out there. Flower head. Yeah, it works for me. <laughs> when did you learn to knit, Amber? I actually got a really late start in knitting. I didn't learn to knit till I was, I think it was my sophomore, junior year of college. Junior year of college. And um, the way that it happened was I got a job on campus doing night security, and we were outside at night year round. It was balls cold. And I hated every single scarf and hat 
in Walmart. So I was like, fuck it. I'm going to make my own. Got some yarn, grabbed some needles, sat down in front of YouTube, and learned how to knit. <laughs> and my first scarf, I nicknamed my hobo scarf, and I still have it to this day. And let me tell you, trying to learn how to knit with black yarn, That's not, smart. not the best idea. Yeah, no. But I did it. Yeah, I actually, when you said hobo scarf, I think I still have one of the first projects that I did, which was a Gryffindor scarf. It's not the same size all the way through, and it's yarn held double, so there's like sparkly fun fur type yarn to yeah. go with like the woolies or something. I don't know. It was like Joann's, not Joann's, we didn't have Joann's where I lived at the time. Hobby Lobby threw up and handed me a scarf, basically, and it's terrible. And I still have it, even though... You know, I have come to accept the fact I'm definitely not Gryffindor, I'm Slytherin. I mean, there, there's sentimental value, though. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's absolutely terrible. I, I can never wear it out in public, but I still have it. old stuff is gone. I don't know. I uh, got rid of it or gave it to ex-boyfriends. I think the oldest thing that we have is the scarf that Chad wears still that is only, like, five years old. Um, I made a sweet Cheshire Cat costume for myself that involved fun fur. I mean, don't get me wrong. Fun fur has its places. Uh, there are not many of them, in mm-hmm. my opinion. But cat they're beds. there. I have some, made some great cat, cat beds. beds. Yeah, mm-hmm. no. Yeah. I have made, like, I have one at my home, and I made one for my mom's cat. It's great. You hold they fun fur. They love with it. Some, yeah, hold fun fur with some regular, like, woolies. And Sweet. it actually works out very yeah. well for cats. Cats love it. And you, you wouldn't have to knit a very big one. So yeah, so my cats are small. Is the illusion there? <laughs> I feed them, I promise. Whereas Aaron and I, our cats are gigantic. I think the problem here is that Emily probably has slightly smaller than average cats, mm-hmm. and then Amber and I have vastly larger than normal cats. Yeah. So our our perception. I mean, is like pretty much every cat that I see out in the wild on my adventures, I think, wow, that cat is huge because my cats are so small. Like the cats that are in like PetSmart and stuff, they're always I'm like, whoa, it's a big cat. Yeah, wait till you meet Gandalf one day. Wow. <laughs> uh, but to continue, tangent number two. Yay! Yay! Cats. Um. So I I made that first scarf for me, and then my coworkers saw it, and they all wanted one. So I continued to knit black scarves. Oh. For probably the next six months of my knitting career. Oh, wow. And yet you continue to knit. It's it's very impressive. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Well, I think the Were thing that... Were you excited about other colors? Well, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think the one saving grace with that was that I... Um, I made sure that each pattern was different, so it wasn't just a garter stitch. So oh. I actually learned that's good for learning like, too. Knitting and purling, and yeah. then I learned cabling, and I even did some lace. And so it was like I I got a lot of technique done without having to worry about color because we only were allowed black. So. Well, and not only that, but you at least got to see your creations being worn and cherished. So mm-hmm. That also yes. helped you slog through a metric fuck ton of black. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, and then, you know, I, I got to, to work on color and then slowly started working on other things beyond just scarves. And then one year for Christmas, my brother asked me to make him a scarf in Purdue's colors, which are black <laughs> and gold. I never want to knit a black scarf again. <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's stained me. You feel it in your soul. I really do. <laughs> okay. So we need to move on to our future project. So we are planning for this year to maybe do a knit along, maybe two if we can, maybe, maybe. I think we can probably do more than just this one. I would hope so. I'm, I'm hoping I mean, so. even I can finish this one in a time okay. manner. Okay, okay. <laughs> so probably two this year. And the first one that we're thinking about doing is the worm pattern by Katharina Knopp. But but we've all kind of decided on what colors we want. Um, so mine is from a company called Knitted to a T. And I'm not sure where to find them anymore. We found it at uh, the Kentucky Sheep and Wool Festival. Like, it's my very first year there. 
And I tried knitting with it before and it just didn't work. And I was like, I really, I love this yarn. It is a, the, the colorway is Lavender Fields. It's a beautiful purple and like a greenish teal color. And it's wonderful and I love it. But it just, it it never knitted up properly. And so I'm really hoping that the, the worm will let those colors shine really. So that, that's, that's my choice for, for the worm hat. My choice involves the Mad Color Hitchhiker Club again because I went stash diving the other day and out popped this skein called 42. It's basically rainbow and black and I love it and it's going to be bright and obnoxious and wonderful and glorious and... And squishy. Squish. It's very squishy. Um, it's the lucid base, I think, on this one. Nice. Yeah, no, I like it. Yeah. It's going to make a very awesome worm. Sweet. Um, I have Knit Pick Stroll um, hand paint in the gumball colorway, which has a lot going on <laughs> colors wise. It's like. It's an understatement. Yeah. It's like. I don't know if I could call it mostly anything. It's got like some orange, it's got some navy, got some purple, pink, aqua, yellow. There's a lot going on. I'm interested to see how it works up as a worm um, because the Stroll hand paints really like work up nice in socks they have like a nice variegation to them so i'm wondering if it's kind of pool funky or something in a yeah, hat I'm i hope so form i'm wondering if this is going to pool like i don't know what this yarn's going to do but no matter what it's probably going to be amazing i don't see myself ripping it out i mean i'm picking this crazy color because i kind of want a crazy hat so yeah well this is my this will be my uh fifth worm hat this uh worm along came along because uh both Aaron and Amber have worm hats that they wear a lot. And I was like, oh, I need a worm hat. And then they were like, oh, we, we should need more, more worm hats. hats. <laughs> we, we totally need more worm hats. It's it's an amazing pattern. It fits well. You can adjust it to your needs. And right. It's, I mean, it's... I have one. Yeah, the pattern is written in sport, but we're all doing fingering. Which I've done on my previous ones, I think. Mm-hmm. I, I but it was um, Blue Moon Fiber Arts. Medium weight or heavyweight? I think heavyweight can be classified as sport, but... No, I've done a solid one in a very nice, like, olive color. And then the one I was actually wearing when I got here today is teal and hot pink splashes on it. And this is a free pattern color. on Ravelry, so. Knit it. <laughs> no, it's, I mean, really, I have, this will be my fifth one. Yes. Yeah. Knit it. Knit it. It's impressive. It's really easy. I love it. It's great purse knitting. Speaking of purse knitting. I forgot to talk about my work in progress, which is in my purse. Oh. Yeah. So we can edit this and move it to works oh, in progress. Just, well, you can just do it now. Do it now. Go for Get it. it. Well, I'm just saying like. Nope. Too late. Move on. Post. Post. Damn it. Post. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so in my purse, I have a pair of vanilla socks. Vanilla. Plain vanilla. And they're not for me. They're for my friend Kirsten. Oh. It was meant to be for a Christmas present, which is now turning into her next birthday present because I still haven't told her about them, so she's not expecting it. Yay. Yep. She also has the same size feet as me, so I never have to worry about actually trying it on her feet. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it's yeah. really nice. So it was actually a local dyer, and what they did was they did a machine knit, and they did a, a subtle gradient. So it goes from like this hot pink to an orange to a blue, and then it goes back to orange pink and it's it's really nice i got it at a yarn crossing yay yay they are wonderful people local yarn shop and i've 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 really enjoyed working with the yarn i've really enjoyed watching the color progress but now i'm just kind of like okay i'm past the heel and i need to just keep chugging along and i keep getting distracted by my other projects you're doing toe up two at a time right yeah yeah Mm -hmm. because for vanilla, there's there's no other way for me. Is that how you always do vanilla socks? Yeah. I've never done two-at-a-time socks. I've tried. Um, and I, actually, I, this pair of socks that I have on it's right now um, are vanilla two-at-a-time socks. The second pair that I tried to do, the yarn just got so tangled up on itself, probably my fault, that um, no, I had to frog those. I also prefer um, DPNs to Magic Loops. So... As do I. Um, but sometimes, like with the self-striping yarn... Um, Mm -hmm. I want to use all of it, and so that was why I I did it before. And actually, after I finish this pussy hat and the worm hat, the purse knitting is going to be 
socks this year. I need more socks. Yeah, I think I'm going to do the um, box of socks uh, knit along that uh, the Yarngasm podcast did this year, and they're doing it again this year, which is you have a box, you fill it with socks, and you're supposed to do like one pair a month. So, Well, we, we attempted something like that a while back, our blind bags. Oh, yeah, no, mine are still in their bags in my closet waiting to be grabbed and knit. Yeah, and, and I still have my, my lovely post-it note of the, the correlation. So what I would do is I would roll a die, and whatever number that was is the number that I would go get, because I didn't feel like putting them all in brown bags. Basically, we, That's just, fun. we just put together 12 months' works worth of sock knitting, and um, I actually put mine all in brown paper bags with the pattern and the yarn in them, and randomly throw my hand back in the closet and grab one. In theory, and I say that because I think I've managed to make none of them, because I tend to get distracted by other things and just cast on all the things and not finish any of them. So when we get to the what if you finish portion of our podcast, you're probably not going to get a whole lot out of me, (laughs) unless the fact that I'm now doing a podcast makes me really feel the need to be project monogamous. Well, you're definitely going to get that pussy hat done. Oh, yeah. You're definitely going to get the worm done because we're going to kick your ass if you don't. It's true. I'm telling you, I may I may have to uh, work on that all the times um, just so that I can show you guys. <laughs> yeah. Because my problem is I can't knit at work. After work, I'm usually too knackered to do anything. So I need a less physically demanding job, basically. <laughs> Bartending. It hurts you sometimes. Well, um... You have stash enhancement that you can talk about for a few moments. I do. I got some stuff for Christmas that's exciting. Um, I got a Chowgu twist uh, red lace needle set, um, which is pretty cool. It has a sweet black and red little zippy pouch, and it is sizes two through nine, question mark? I'm opening it right now to confirm what the sizes actually are. Yeah, I don't remember um, because I personally have the Addy two through eight, but um, I want to get the Chowgu minis. Yeah, like, I really whoa. like the Chowgu the red lace cable um, because it doesn't have memory, so it doesn't get kinked. Maybe I'll be able to do um, magic loop socks. Maybe I think that um, I'm gonna try because I I've tried to do Magic Loop with the knit picks and uh, they drive yeah, me crazy yeah. because the no. cables are oh kind of crap fantastic. My mine's knit picks needles. Yes, well you're, yeah, you're crazy a f- fancy special magical fairy. I, no, <laughs> she's the fairy. <laughs> yes, I am the fairy. Yeah, no, you can't call me fairy. She's no, no. she's the fairy. That that is in fact true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Actually, we can use that as a nice segue if you want to we talk about our, our ravelry names, oh, our yes. ravelry names, and our Instagram accounts. Oh yeah. Um, the reason that I get to be the fairy is because I, on Ravelry I'm Water Fairy, and you can find me on Instagram as Irish Water Fairy. Um, I'll be the one with the currently pink hair and pictures of cats and knitting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I am Kitty with a cupcake on Ravelry. My picture is a picture of a cat with a cupcake, um, and I'm also Kitty with a cupcake on Instagram. That's what I use most frequently. And I am... What What am I? Rue Rocker. Rocker. <laughs> Sorry. I get it confused. It's like Rue Rocker or Zerk or what? No, Rue Rocker 33. Yeah, Rue Rocker 33 on, on Ravelry. And on Instagrams, I am Bruise and Use, which is also my blog, bruiseanduse.wordpress.com. <laughs> don't look at me i don't have a blog <laughs> i also don't have a blog um and then we also have group social medias for this podcast um we are f this knit on pretty much all of your basic social media accounts and that is because some of them allow you to say fuck and some of them do not so it was easier just to make them all f this knit um and we are on facebook.com slash f this knit twitter at f this knit instagram at f this knit and you can email us if you have questions or suggestions or anything fancy like this at uh, fthisknit at gmail.com. And we have our very own Ravelry group now. Yes. And that one is Fuck This Knit. Because, because we can. Because we can. And <laughs> Thank you, Ravelry. We yeah. love you. So yeah, that's exciting. Come hang out with us. We'll post things in our group. In yeah, theory. we need to decide. We'll make like, a little worm-along thread. Yeah, yeah. worm-along thread. That's mm-hmm. a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
good idea. Write this down. We could put a thread for uh, how you learn to knit, too, because mm-hmm. that is thematically appropriate. Yeah. Since that is, you know, our thing this month. Mm-hmm. Something else that we should mention is we're going to be updating monthly. Yeah, so we'll be posting the second Tuesday of every month. Um, just because Tuesdays are when we get to hang out and drink talk shit and drink and... And drink. And drink and knit. Mm-hmm. Tangent number three! No, it wasn't necessarily tangent. That was, oh, hey, you're calling me a fairy. We should probably explain fact, why. My bra just got attached to my chair when I bent down <laughs> to... Uh, <laughs> grab my stash enhancement here your chair's getting uh, handsy, <laughs> handsy. I don't, ikea it wants me <laughs> um, I mean, it is IKEA. so another stash enhancement i have is white birch fiber arts this one makes me lusty yeah so i wasn't i was like i'm not gonna buy any yarn because i'm gonna get yarn for christmas and i have lots of yarn but then i saw that this was in stock on their etsy store and i bought it because it's really pretty it makes me tingle in special places yeah yeah so it is their 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon uh, base. It doesn't appear to have a name, but it is sock yarn. And the colorway is nothing says screw you like a rainbow. And it is awesome. If you have not seen this colorway, you should go look it up right now because it is badass. It is a really bright. Um, it's a self-striping and it's really bright, skinny rainbow stripes um, with big bands of like a cloud like a sky, sky. Blue with fluffy white clouds on it mm-hmm. and it's amazing it's very incredible um so i got that um which is destined to be vanilla socks because it is too pretty to be anything else pretty much right maybe throw like a random cable up the side nope nope nope, nope. nope. just vanilla okay. just vanilla um let the yarn be itself i mean no trust me that really does make me tingle in special places um, Lusting after that yarn for also a i'm doing a one cable up right now on my socks so That's it wouldn't true. kill me to do vanilla next um and then i also got this sweet um miss babs gradient set ah, shawl set thing this one um, makes me drool it's really pretty uh it is yummy her yummy two ply toes base it's a skein of fleur de sel with the grand bazaar um gradient pack and the fleur de sel is a uh, light beautiful gray, gray. yeah no that's a neutral gray. and then the gradient is um it's like a gradient gray, of browns. Yeah, purpley browns though. Well, more I, I would call them cool browns. Yeah. I think they're more purple than brown. Some of them. Some of them are definitely more brown than purple. It's a gradient. It's a gradient. <sighs> yeah, and that will probably be an Umbo O'Brien shawl of some form because a lot of her patterns are written to work with those Miss Babs gradient sets. So it might be her Torquata pattern or I don't know. I don't really love the Spice Market Shawl by <gasps> Melanie Berg. I love that one. I it's pretty. Say, uh, really loves it. I love it's that pretty. One. I don't know that I would wear that shape very much. Well, I don't wear shawls, period. I just like knitting them. Oh. <laughs> I want to wear it because it's like pretty. <laughs> right. No, um, I, I wear mine. Yeah. Um, and the Torquata is more of a wrap. So it's kind of like an. It's the same shape as that Mukari that I am knitting right now. But yeah, the big giant triangle doesn't super appeal to me as a thing, especially because the triangle part is very like deep. It's not shallow like the Hitchhiker. It's like a big triangle. I really Um, like the only triangle shawl. So I'm still, this was the year, or 2016 was the year that I finally I think this was designed for that on the Spice Market shawl. Like that's what this colorway is for. 2016 was the year I finally managed to knit lace and not have to rip it out in frustration every single time I attempted it, mm-hmm. as in previous years. So I'm still oh, learning yeah, which... I like that purple thing that you made. That's yeah. kind of a big triangle. It is a big triangle. It's a, a phoenix's tail, and I can't remember off the top of my head who designed the pattern. It's by Nim Teasdale. And I really like it. It's a giant triangle, but I just wear the triangle in front. Triangle. This is an even triangle, though, that on the Spice Market is a, um, it's not. Yeah, I'm still learning what shawl shapes I like to wear personally. So right now I'm just kind of knitting them all. I think I like crescent shape the most. They're Um, horrible to block, though. I don't care. They're nice to wear. I've been mainly making shawlettes, Mm -hmm. a la Artina Bem. But, you know. No, we'll see. Maybe I'll do it. And then I also have a fiber, which is milk fiber. I have spun that. That's actually really yeah, interesting to spin. It's 100% milk fiber. I got it to do state fair. Yeah. Like, no, I did 100% milk fiber for the state fair. And it's from Blue Barn Fiber on Etsy, which I also got that um, 
a spun yarn to make my mom a shawl for Christmas and it is 50% alpaca and 50% silk and it came from them and that was great so they are cool you should buy things from them it is a gradient that goes from a green to a purple and yeah, the colorway is called Sleeping Beauty <sighs> I really may have to knock you down and steal that mm-hmm. they have yeah and then one after you spin store. it I'll steal it from you that sounds fine. Um, and then after so yeah. you knit it, she'll steal it back and have a finished product. Yeah, there we go. There we go. There we go. It all works out. Just tell me what pattern you want. <laughs> yeah, I don't have any stash and hands mitt. Um, I'm currently trying to cold sheep 2017, I think. Yeah, I was trying not to really buy anything until um, the Kentucky, Kentucky sheep, and, sheep wool, and wool. Which is usually the second week. It's the second week of May. That's when I'm going to go crazy, go nuts, possibly. We'll see. Um, but I do know that um, no matter how frozen my sheep are, they immediately become unthought as soon as I walk out into the fairground because fuck trying to. S- no, I can't. It's May 20th through the 21st. All right. All I know is that I ask off for that weekend from work and I spend the whole weekend running around and spending all kinds of money. And I know what I want to buy this year, but it's very, very, very expensive. So we'll see if people love their bartender enough to buy her a second spinning wheel between now and May. Oh, you're buying a traditional? That's my goal for this year is to buy um, the flat iron, actually. Ah. Yeah. When Emily and I went on the field trip to the Woolery to play with spinning wheels, that's when I discovered that aesthetically it's not that pleasing to me. I'll admit it. It spins like a motherfucking dream, and uh, I need it in my life. So I'm just going to have to pimp it out to make it more aesthetically (laughs) pleasing to me. Um, after I get it. So you said pimp it out, and I'm like, oh, so I get to spin on it. <laughs> I mean, there's an hourly rate, yeah. <laughs> She's probably more than I can afford. She's more than I can afford, are you kidding me? That's why I got to pimp her out. <laughs> Legit. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I have bought this rainbow yarn and joined that Mad Tosh thing on Jimmy Beans, so I'm really doing great in that not buying yarn until... <laughs> Kentucky sheep and wool adventure. Yeah, I really don't have any stash enhancements. Although my mom at the the end of last year did buy me a Christmas present of the Mad Color Geek Tour for the the Supernatural, and oh, I've received yeah. two out of the three so far. the The third one should be coming soon. She got a little behind because she got sick, which is completely and totally understandable. And I love her yarn enough that I don't care. Yeah, and she. I mean, we joined the Geek Tour. What, two, two years, years ago. ago and I did it for like a solid year and a half before yep. I realized that I needed to freeze my sheep because the stash is getting pretty ugly sized at this point but that was the main reason that I dropped out is I don't need anymore but it's always shown up in a very timely manner and it's always been lovely and it's always beautiful I mean I've mentioned two of my things I received this podcast alone yeah like the one of the ones that I received uh uh, the Queen of Moons is uh, Charlie Bradbury in Supernatural, who's played by Felicia Day. And it is a beautiful crimson red with some gray and yellow in it. And it's just like, I just completely drooled over this thing for at least 20 minutes before I decided, I have no clue what I'm going to make with it, but it needs to be perfect. So is it sock yarn or? It's always fingering weight. Yeah, it, but does it have nylon in it? the The base depends on oh, okay. on on the type. I'd be there, much cause... more likely to join one of those if I knew that the base had nylon in it, because then I could always make it into socks if I didn't well, see, know what actually, the hell to do with it. Most of the time, when I when I was doing the club, I was getting fiber because um, yeah. she has both yarn and she fiber. She has both yarn and fiber, and at that point, I did not have a lot of fiber stash. But then I started going to Kentucky yeah, sheep have... and wool. <laughs> And, you know, ended up with fleecy fleece that are still sitting in my apartment waiting for me to learn how to process sheep fleece. And not to mention, there's a lovely uh, mill that brings Ohio Valley Natural, Ohio Valley fiber, Natural Fibers, um, which is also a sheep proce- uh, wool processing mill. But they have pounds of literal pounds of fiber that you can buy at a, not a large amount of price. So, mm-hmm. yeah. See, I think I remember the, so the, the color I got was like a, a natural gray color. And so I don't mm. think they really had to dye it. Uh, it was like a pound for eight bucks or something like that. Snap. Yeah. No, it's ridiculous. I bought several sweaters worth of yarn, of wool from them. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. That teal was gorgeous. Yeah. I need to finish what's actually on my wheel right now and get started on actually knitting or spinning for a sweater. There's so many things that I want to spin right now. And there's so many things I want to knit. And I just, you know, I need more time. Mm Mm-hmm. I need a time machine. But Mad Color, uh, most, of, most of the stuff, most of the yarn that she has put out has been, uh, you can make socks out of it. It'll have nylon or silk in it. There were a couple ones that she had that actually had sparkle in it. Ooh, sparkle. That. Oh, yeah, you reminded me there was that one month that came with the extra sparkle on the side. That was the fiber. I didn't have the fiber that one. Yeah. No, I, I had the, looking. I had the. What was that? yarn i don't remember but i remember it was absolutely gorgeous and i knit something up with it and i probably gifted it because <sighs> i gift everything yeah i'm a weirdo yep That's but we're friends i still have the very very first yarn that she sent us was the uh briar thorn you remember that one mm-hmm. beautiful dark green with like almost fuchsia like thrown throughout yeah, I still have the fiber. And I made a pair of gloves out of it, and I still have those gloves oh, to this day. Those are good gloves. Oh, I love those, those say, Those were the gloves that you lost mm-hmm. over. I was coveting them. I think yeah. that that is in my future, is a pair of fingering weight gloves. And those didn't have any nylon in it. That was uh, merino silk. And, and they've held up really They've held well. up really well. And, I mean, I would, like, bike in them because I bike yeah i mean i'd be fine making something i'd be fine making gloves without nylon in them because it's not that cold here and i don't wear gloves that frequently that's my cold chicago heart so cold chicago lack of heart yeah, snap I said <laughs> yeah I said it what come at me i have needles so i mean if you ever feel like there is something from mad color that you just have to have don't be afraid to go after it because she is amazing yeah, yeah. no everything i've worked with so far has been really awesome yeah. Like, I even bought my husband yarn from her for his uh, Doctor Who hat ah. that he made. And Aaron just put the pussy hat on her head. Hey, it could be one of those stupid uh, ponytail hats with the hole in the top. Right You're now. about to lose a stitch, sweetie. Yeah, you are. it's fine. I can pick that up. That's no problem. It's okay. just stocking it at this point. And not to mention, um, I don't have enough hair for a ponytail. None of us do. Bun. No. Yeah. I, mean, I guess we could do our knitting goals for the year if you really wanted to or knitting goals for the month i have goals for the year written down i mean they're not super involved they're just like general kind of things finish my first sweater um which i actually have to get done by the end of march because i'm in that uh dorky harry potter knitting group on ravelry the the harry potter house cup yeah so in the winter uh term they uh have a detention owl so i am you can do works in progress for that so i'm doing the mukari shawl that i mentioned and the sweater for that so i have to get that done by the end of march another goal i have is to enter three knitting projects and three spinning projects in the state fair this year and start this podcast is one of those so done check <laughs> um, i think we can all check that one off yep uh the box of socks cal from uh, the yarngasm podcast i mentioned already a lot of people do that one and uh i'd like to write a pattern not necessarily like a money pattern just like to invent a pattern of well she is the artist sort. in this group yeah we're the scientists. Yeah. I have vague Photoshop skills, so I could make like a pattern page look nice and stuff. So if I could come up with something fairly original enough, that could be an okay thing to do. And then start a sock yarn scrap blanket. Debating between a uh, mitered square, like patchwork quilt kind of jam, or going around the interwebs, there has been a granny square crochet blanket that is really blowing up yeah, right now. Yeah, that looks really nice. It appeals to me that it goes so much quicker. Crochet just, I have a hard time with crochet just because it, it hurts my wrist. I mm-hmm. sprained my right hand wrist many years ago uh, attempting to skate for roller derby. And <laughs> um, yeah, crochet and I don't get along very well. I it suck at crochet. Wrist. Like, yeah. crochet I mean, is... Literally the only thing I've ever made with crochet is, like, amigurumi little cutesy animal guys. I've never made anything like a blanket or a garment out of crochet. I attempted an amigurumi uh, Earl Meyer flask, because I'm 
and science dork. And I kid you not, this thing looked deformed. Like, I can't even do amigurumi. But apparently I can crochet the fuck out of some doilies. Who knew? Oh, yeah, you can. I just didn't like it. Because <sighs> thread. Blah. Yeah, I think if I was if I was going to go that route, I would get one of those like ergonomic. Um, cro- I have a set of crochet hooks that I never use because I don't really crochet. Um, but uh, one of those handles with like or the crochet hook with like the, the plastic grip. like grippy on it. Yeah, that would actually probably help. Uh, my- it's like it's like a toothbrush handle almost. It's like chunky. I just mm-hmm. need to get the grip that you can add to previous crochet hooks because I have my great grandmother's crochet set. Yeah. So I bet that's a thing. Sentimental. I, I think it is. Actually, I did see someone um, using Sculpey to Ew. make their own. Yeah, they make like Sculpey that is um, has give to it. Yeah, so I saw somebody using Sculpey to, or uh, what is that, Sugru? It's this weird stuff that's... Um, is that stuff that you fix cords with? Yeah, it's the stuff that you fix cords with, Sugru, whatever. Mm-hmm. And it actually dries to where it's like a flexible rubbery thing, so that would work too. I've actually used that before for different stuff around the house, and it's really nice. But yeah, I don't know. I feel like I should maybe do the mitered square one, even though it would take longer because I like the way it looks and I am more of a knitter than a crocheter. And if the crochet blanket goes so fast, I could be at a point where I actually run out of scraps that I want to use and I don't want to be like buying minis to add to this blanket. So I feel like I would go at a more reasonable pace if I was doing the mitered square. Do you guys have goals, hopes, dreams? I don't have hopes and dreams. I work in food service. Mm. Actually, I do have some goals. I would like to finish the sweater that I'm working on now. And at least one more this year because I have, I don't know, like seven sweater quantities. I thought you were up to eight. I don't, I'm trying not to think too hard. That's not including the fiber. But yeah, I think I am up to eight. Um, Just in yarn. Oh yeah, you're right. Because my grandmother, when I went to see her over Christmas, was like, I don't like this yarn. Here, have this. And it's a sweater quantity of knit picks alpaca something oh, okay oh yeah no it's great and it's just really that, oh hey i do have stash enhancement i forgot there thanks grandmother is it the andean treasure A- that's andean one? silk that's alpaca oh i don't think they make that one anymore they don't um but grandmother has a stash like i do that just kind of sits what around color is it chocolate Ooh. so i'll have this really pretty brown sweater what's great is that one of the sweaters that i've already made was in that yarn in cinnamon so owls. I'm going to have, yeah, the owl sweater. I did that in cinnamon, held it double, and it was great. So I'm going to try to make two sweaters this year to whittle down the sweater quantities. Um, I, too, am going to spin for the state fair. Traditionally, I try to spin for every category except for art yarn, personal preference. Um, the last two years, I've not made that goal, and I'm going to make that goal this year. I should make some hexies. Because I'm doing the beekeeper's quilt because I, the hexies are cute. I bought that pattern because the hexies are cute. So that could, in theory, be my sock yarn blanket. But I don't really like how they get joined at the end. How there's holes in between them. I've seen where people actually crochet them together. Ooh, no. Right. I like the fact that you tie them together because in the pattern it states, should something happen to one of them, you can make a new hexy puff, untie the corners, and put a new one in there. So should parts of the blanket get damaged or, you know, whatever... It's easily repaired with just a few new hexes. Plus, I think the puffs are cute, so I might make a pillow out of them if I yeah. make any of them. I'm putting lavender in my puffs, so it's going to be a lavender-scented blankie. And I uh, make two pairs of socks. And two? Or, or finish two pairs of socks, because I know you have several on the needles. Were they listed in my works in progress? No, I don't think so. Therefore, they don't exist in, in our new land. Uh-huh. <laughs> mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I think they exist in your apartment. <laughs> <laughs> that may be true. We all have works in progress that we didn't mention in our works in progress section because they are Boonets languishing. <laughs> Boonets and cow what? Yeah. Well, yeah. Hey, after I finish that stole, that is on, bitches. It would be really sad if Amber finished that before. Bo- so Aaron and I both started that. Um, well, and I that- love mine, the taboo. Name. Yeah, I love mine too. It's beautiful, but I really fucked it up and I need to rip back a lot of work and I haven't had the guts to do it yet. No, I just worked my started working my ass off and uh, started dating some guy. And next thing I know, all my spare time is now gone. So it's I- hard too because you can't really work on that at n- and night. And do anything else, mm-hmm. right? And so I usually work on a lot of my knitting either at knit night or at um, Gore Club Club Mm -hmm. on Sundays. I go to a bar and they play horror movies and I sit there and drink and knit and it 
I am known to be sitting there and drinking and knitting and it's great because Gore Club is awesome. So yeah, I want to finish two pairs of socks. Didn't say if they were new pairs of socks or not. Oh, okay. Just two pairs of okay, socks. Okay, okay, okay. And yes, just two because some of us don't finish as many things as others at this table. Thank you. Yeah, we're both looking at Emily right now. But then I can also give a side <laughs> eye to Amber. She made the comment. I not did me. make the comment. But well, one of my goals was 12 pairs of socks. So I thought it was funny that you had two. Yes, I have two. <laughs> um, yeah. Go ahead and make fun of the person. Yeah. That's that's super nice, super awesome of you. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go home and cry. Um, and well, then... apparently, I don't have a heart because I'm from Chicago. So. <laughs> this is true. Mm-hmm. You just thank you for it's resting. It's just ice case. in there. Yeah, exactly. It's frozen. And uh, tour de fleece. Every year, I try to participate. Yeah, yeah. I didn't every spin year, that yet for that last year. Every year, something happens. This year, um, I got a new job and had I was work training at my new job and working at my old job simultaneously for like a good solid two weeks there which meant i got no sleep and no tour de fleece time i'd been doing really well up until that part started so yeah tour de fleece make a thing that happens this year i'm gonna i'm gonna do that and that's pretty much all of my goals i think those are good goals yeah yes all two socks yeah Mm -hmm. that's a very good goal you need socks in your life i do because my i'm wearing hand knit socks right now and they're so comfy and i need more yes yes you do Everyone needs more hand-knit socks, in my opinion. I yes. Just... Okay. Now, your turn. Oh, God damn it. Yep. Nope, uh, we weren't going to skip you. Uh-huh. Oh, Lordy. Um, so, my goals. What are my goals? I'm coming up with this on the fly because yeah, no, I Notice have, how I'm yeah. scratching mine down while Emily I was, was prepared, so I was yeah. cheating. So, I, I, I do the will work for yarn, and I think I'm going to continue with that through the year. I also have a goal of doing whatever knit along the girls decide they want to do i will oh, join yeah, them absolutely yeah pretty much if they're like hey we want to knit this i'll be like okay so what you're saying is after the worm it's time for the pain fuck you <laughs> no i don't want to be a part of that <laughs> you guys have to agree <laughs> damn it <laughs> long story short there's this very lovely overly complicated shawl um it's overly complicated on. that in the fact that i just can't knit it there's nothing to do with the shawl itself it's beautifully designed Amber and I attempted a cast on, or a knit along. pay on along previously. We failed epically, and it became known as the pain. And at some point, I'm going to knit that damn thing. It will be my piece de resistance. Yeah. Because that cast on took us, what, two and a half hours? Uh, something like that. Yeah. The, the entire uh, showing of Naked Boys Live. Oh, oh, yeah, Naked Boys Singing. That was excellent. Yeah, that was great. I'm sad they took that off Netflix. Yeah. So basically, one of my goals is to to do whatever knit along the the. So we, what you're saying is, as long as we agree, as on long something, as you guys agree on something, we have painful. the power. Yeah. And <laughs> and if I have it in my stash, because I'm I'm not buying yarn. Anyways, um, so another thing I want to do is I want to make more socks. I'm not giving myself an amount because why do that to myself? Yeah, for for me, I I think I want to continue working through a little project that I've been going through is um uh, so Whip Woman Designs has a whole series of Lord of the Rings and Hobbit inspired sock patterns. I really want to do all those. And I have been slowly working through all Wait, of them. Um, yeah, no, Amber has been doing all of those. Mm-hmm. And every the, time she finishes a pair, I'm like, "Oh, I need to do those." And then I see something else shiny and run away there one of her collections in particular is the fellowship of the sock so it's once one pair of socks for each one of the fe- members of the fellowship of the ring i have knit several of them and i have the yarn for the rest of them so i think it's going to be my goal maybe not to finish them this year but to at least work on it this year maybe finish it next year depending on how many i get done well she's gone so far as to like match the colorways as to what would go with the character. What what I feel would go with the right, character. It's intense. It is intense. I would just probably pick random shit and knit it. So like with my Legolas socks, they're purple because Legolas is a prince. Uh, He's royalty. Okay, and I can buy that. I can get behind that. And, and uh, my Pippin socks, which have yet to be made, I'm I'm using. I'm going to be using uh, Knit Picks Stroll. They're they're kettle dyed, and I think it's kindling. So it's this nice russet brown color. Because he's, you know, he's a hobbit. He's adorable. And I love him to death. And <laughs> I don't have favorites. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, nope, not at all. Yeah. So Pippin's the best. He really is. Favorites for the win. Yeah. So I think I think for my goals, it's, it's going to be continue with the will work for yarn. Do whatever knit along you two divas decide. And then, uh, 
Yes. Yeah, she just called or divas, us divas, apparently. Divas. <laughs> divas. Yes, because I'm so very diva-like. Well, you prefer bitch? Yes. Sure. Okay. Whatever you two <laughs> bitches decide. And I mean, have you met me? We'll work for yarn. Knit along, which apparently is a huge ordeal with these two. <laughs> it will be. Gosh. It Even though we now. decided on the worm along in like five seconds. So. But like, you know, there's also the boo knits thing. And, and, you know, I will gladly join in on that once our other knit along is done. And then if there's anything else that you guys are ooh shiny about, you know, I'll, I'll join in. All right. That, that's, uh, I think, a matter of public record at this point. And yes. I can hold you to that. Yep. You, you can. have this. As it's long recorded. as I have the yarn. Because like you, I'm cold sheeping it, damn it. Yeah, but I also know when your birthday is. And just because I'm cold sheeping doesn't mean I can't enable. <laughs> and my birthday is right around the time of the Kentucky, Kentucky sheep, sheep and wool. wool. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure is. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, I know. I know this. And to, I think another goal that I should make for myself for this year would be to finally finish spinning that pink shit. Yes. It's a good goal. You're almost done. I'm plying. I know. And I've been plying for a while now. Like two weeks. Yeah, two weeks. It just seems forever because you've been working on that yarn for forever. Yeah. yeah. This is what happens when you do a two-ply lace weight. This is the yarn that never ends. It really is. I think you've been working on that the entire time that I have known you as a person. Yep. <laughs> and I've actually been working on it for longer than that because what year did I enter the other half of that yarn into the state fair? I believe the answer is 2015. Final answer. Yeah. 2015, I entered... The first half of that yarn into the state fair, and I've continued She's to work. She's really on it. tired of this fiber. Whoa! Yeah, th nothing else has been on my wheel in between those. Why? Well, I mean, intense. yeah, she had a baby. Commitment. Yeah, I did have a baby. She had a baby. Oh, yeah. I couldn't really spin or knit or eat or she got function. Kind of big that whole having a baby process. Got fucking got fat. The <laughs> there was this kind of baby shaped thing between her and the wheel there for a hot minute. Okay, yeah. this makes yeah. sense to me. So, as much as she's complaining, part of it was because she incubated a you human. You made a human. Yeah. Counts yeah. as like 500 skeins of yarn. If only. It does actually count as a finished project in the monthly threads. Now. It does. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah. If only I'd known that last year. Yeah, I actually, I think that was just determined like last month. Mm -hmm. Baby humans now count as a uh, finished. The monthly thread I refer to is the monthly. We will continue to refer to that because we're all in that thing. That's actually how um, I met Emily. It's true. The internet. What's the internet? So your internet friends. It is a part of LSG. It is their monthly thread. And I think for this is just for me, just January, for me January 4. In Lazy, Stupid, and Godless. There are swears. But yeah, if you're listening to this, you hope to God you're okay with some fucking We're swears. We're going to not <laughs> put disclaimers about that. Yeah. Except you totally just put a disclaimer on that. Oh, the, our, disc our dis personal well, disclaimer. I thought, but like the Lazy, Stupid, and Godless is separate from us so, so yeah valid our disclaimer. personal disclaimer is in our title yeah <laughs> but yeah so we will end up referring to the monthly threads fairly often so if we say that that's what we mean yeah i want some candy my husband just walked into the room and is blatantly eating candy in front of people <laughs> and not offering to share said candies i mean what kind of host are you sir and see, now I have to open the wrapper Shout right out, in front of the mouth he sings our beautiful theme song <laughs> at yes. the beginning of the episode yes he ran okay. away. Now I have to. <laughs> Sound effects. That's of the best we can get to taste a vision or smell a vision with these Lindor truffles we're eating. Mm. What flavor is this? I think it's the salted caramel. It doesn't taste like salted caramel. I don't get any salt. I need There's salt. There's definitely salt. I need mm. salt. I guess I'm one of those it's people. It's crunchy. Mm -hmm. I guess we can say that. Um... Thanks for listening. Please don't hate us. Okay, bye. Tune in next time <laughs> for more knitting and talking and, and cursing. Yeah. And we could sign off by saying, fuck, fuck it. Fuck it. Yeah, fuck it. Whatever. Fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck this knitting.